Hey guys, in this video, I am going to take one of the, some code from one of the users in Discord uh, and refactor it. This was a challenge that they had asked for. They posted their code and said, hey, anybody who wants to go refactor this, I'd love to see what people do with it. Uh, just uh, not as a competition, but as just a learning experience. So I'm gonna do that. However, I am going to limit myself to 20 minutes. I've got a timer here because I tend to ramble on and I have somewhat limited time, so, but I can't refuse a good challenge. So I'm gonna refactor this uh, in 20 minutes. Um, I do have my solution posted online, so this will probably, I'll probably end up making some changes that make it look more like that. I'm not doing it in, on purpose. Like I don't remember exactly what I did. I just know that I tend to do the same types of things. So it'll just kind of coincidentally, I'll probably end up adding in some of those same elements. Um, some of that is not necessarily, uh, like some, some of it's subjective. Like it's the way I would do it. It doesn't necessarily make it better, but anyway, food for thought, interesting to see how somebody else solves a problem, if nothing else. Um, so here we are. Um, anything else before we start the timer? I don't think so, but I am gonna cut it off at 20 minutes. That probably will, will leave some stuff on the table, some stuff that I could have done. Um, that I'm not going to do, but time is precious. So 20 minutes and go. I'm just going to move this off the screen and I'll still be able to see it and it'll ding when it ends. But all right. So first things first, this isn't like I already looked through this there. This, this is the hunting the manticore boss battle. And if you've done like this is at the end of part one, I'm going to limit myself to just tools that are in part one, even though if you know, if it were later on, I might use some of the stuff in part two, but we're not going to worry about that. First things first, this code, as I got it online, does not compile, and that's because there's no main method. So I'm going to, this essentially is the main method, right? This is, this is it. This is everything. So I'm going to start by, if I just name this main, that fixes that. Um, well, maybe I should show that. I'm going to push this and it'll say, there are build errors. No, program does not contain a static main method. Well, this method right here, it works for us. So if I just make this main, then we're good to go. Uh, and now it's working. I'm not going to run this. I assume that people who are watching this have probably made this program themselves. And if not, they'll get to it. Um, but now it's running with a main method. With that said, I, I actually very much prefer um, the, the the top level statement version of this. Uh, and, and that's like all the examples in the book do that. And that's what I prefer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move all this code out of here poof, and just slap it in right here. Now I have top level main. Now, the one big thing that's different, the one thing I broke here is all these variables. These are static variables. And the book hasn't talked about classes or static variables yet. So like this is, uh, you know, I mean, going kind of above and beyond in, in terms of using this, but I'm just going to remove these as well and stick them up here. Um, and I, so these now just became local variables. So they don't need this private on it. And nor do they need this static on it. And so now I've got just some local variables to find here at the beginning. And now I can delete the, this like formal main, this formal like main pro, like program class, this namespace, like all this, I don't even need to, I don't need to see it. It's gone. Right. So that it, the main thing that does is it removes all these layers of indentation that used to be there. And now it's gone. Um, I don't need this using directive in here. You can already see that Visual Studio saying you don't need it. So that's gone. So now I, I have less code and it does the same thing. I think that is a good improvement. Um, all right. So the next thing here is, uh, and I don't, this, some of this might have come from just like the, like the way that this was copied onto the internet and then how I pulled it down. Uh, there's like extra white space here. I personally am not getting anything out of that. So I'm going to delete it. I wonder if there's any more. Let's check. I don't see, uh, there's a, there's a couple lines here. So I'm going to just tweak the white space for me having 
you know, the, the good usage of white space, which includes not having it when it's unhelpful and having it when it is helpful, uh, goes a long way just to making the code readable. I I don't know what it is, but I like I see this, you know, that whether you put the while on that line or on the next line, like C Sharp doesn't care about the white space. You can do it however you want it. For whatever reason, I've just I kind of like having that down here a little better. Um, so I'm going to do that again. These are little changes. Um, I, I again, this is another one of those personal preference things. Um, I if I don't. Well, plenty of things to talk about here. If there's, if I don't need the curly braces, I will tend to leave it out, right? So I will usually do it this way. Um, again, it's less code, and to me, this is just as readable. There's a caveat, and I'll show it down here. So like this has the same thing. If it's this, um, you know, do this. Else, if it's this, like I would remove these curly braces, but. It's weird, right? Like I, when one, like I could, like C sharp is totally fine with me doing, removing these curly braces and having it this way, except like obviously here, because there's two statements in here, I need the curly braces. This bothers my brain to have, you know, out of the, out of the four, actually, this is technically And move that down. I, in my brain, that was like part of the same thing. But it, 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 yeah. So these, the fact that like two of these don't need the curly braces and the last one does, just kind of like I, I don't. It gives me some anxiety. So I, like this is one of those things where I might genuinely, um, leave the curly braces in all three of them just to have like the symmetry. Not everybody's going to feel that way. And and I will say, and I say this in the book too, some people have a strong preference for just putting the curly braces in. If for no other reason, then it helps them not make the mistake of like what will sometimes happen, especially if you're used to a language that like doesn't have curly braces where you do something like this and you say console.write line. Too bad. Where like they and Visual Studio unindented that, which is a good indicator that like that's not what it's doing, but where this kind of thing where it's like, you know, I mean, all of this is protected by the if statement, which in this case isn't true. Uh, you need either a block statement with the curly braces or it needs to just like it needs to be a single statement. And the only reason we're able to make this work otherwise is that a block statement allows you to treat many statements as though they're one statement. Anyway, so we could do this. The other possibility here is we could do something like this. We could we could separate the text, so I'm going to leave that text there and just move this down, and then so now all of this chunk of code here is about like what do I show the user, and then we say um, if player two range equals player one one range. Oops, I pushed a page up or something. What did I just do? Um, this so we could do that and now that solves my issues with the curly braces in theory like this is like I this is the same logic that gets us into here so like why do that I I don't know I don't know that that's any better um, it's just a different something to think about now the main thing that I feel like could be done different is a few more methods and actually the person who, who 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 has this code actually said that themselves um you know and there's a comment there's like note to self use more methods um i think for example it's really easy and we do know about methods at this point in the book it's really easy to do something like um uh, adding in some methods and i think this code right here strikes me as a really good example of a method like we could do and actually so if i do control I'm going to, I'm, I'm kind of winging this, so I might be wrong here, but control R M. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Let me undo that and go back and describe it. So I select the step I want in a method and I hit control R. And then you can see down here, the button says control R was pressed waiting for a second key of the cord. And now I push control M. So control R gets you into a handful of refactoring tools and then you have to pick the specific one, which is 
new method. Now I give it a name. So given around, figure out how much damage this will be. So I do that and now it just made the method for me, which is nice that it did that. Um, it stuck it up here at the top. At, well, <laughs> that's weird. It stuck it up here at the top, but it stuck it in a really awkward place. Um, I'm going to move it myself. I It's usually better about placement than that. But anyway, there we go. Now this slapped the static on here. You don't strictly need that. But uh, it also doesn't hurt to have that. That, putting the static on there, like I don't typically do that, but that what that's doing is it's saying, look, this method, compute damage, it lives inside of the main method. That actually means it has access to the variables um, that the main method has. And that is a pathway to some power, but it's also a pathway to having everything all intertwined and intertangled and hard to like, you change one little thing and everything else breaks kind of stuff. Like, so in theory, you don't want these like little methods that live under the main method to have access to that stuff, unless you really need it. Every once in a while, there's a scenario where that makes a lot of sense. In this case, though, we um, pass in the, the like, we don't need that. We pass in the variable that we use to make this decision, and then we return the result. So this method is, it's called, it's referred to as a pure method. It doesn't have any side effects. Nothing happens besides um, whatever the value is that's, that is produced. Um, I might, now that I have this, I might actually restructure it like this. So if round, so, rather than declaring a variable i personally might do it like this and just say if that condition's good um return 10 and then down here return three and then down here return one um this i don't know if this is an accident or not um so in most cases I mean, so this, like the, the way the book is talking about this, this should use this. We haven't talked about the bitwise. Um, and looks like that's been used here too. And this might like, uh, like this, this, this bitwise and operator works at the bit level rather than like at the like value level, except that it does work with Booleans just fine. Um, Maybe it's just that I'm a traditionalist. I don't typically do that. I typically do this. Um, I wonder if there's any more of those. No, there isn't. Anyway, so that that's how I would do it. That doesn't make it, um, you know, right or wrong. I'm wondering if this kind of thing will make it easier to... read, but I don't know if it will. I do like the symmetry of these things, you know, where like, so it, the conditions here, and then like, I can just see like, I, it's easy to see the pattern, like it's three different conditions, if else else if, um, and then depending on what it is, I return 10 or three or one. So I might do it that way. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it this way right now, because I only have seven and a half minutes left. Um, but on a different day, I might have done this quite different anyway. But anyway, that's a good example of a method because it is this pure thing. Like I can just say, look, I just tell me how much damage is supposed to be. Just figure it out. Um, so there it is. Uh, let's fix this thing. I don't, so this code here, these, so this, uh, this is one of these interesting things about C sharp and, and this isn't just C sharp. It's a lot of languages. Um, both statements and expressions are fundamental building blocks of the language and like there are statements all over in here you know that's a that's a statement that's a statement that's a statement these are statements this if if is a statement and it has like with a lot of these things both statements and expressions a lot of times there's little little holes in the in the thing that allow you to fill in 
you know, something else to customize it. So it's not literally the same thing every time. Uh, and if is a good example, you know, you have if, and then you need the parentheses and then there's like sub expression here. And then there is a statement that follows it, that it, you know, if you look at the specification of C sharp, it calls it an embedded statement. Like that is the, that is the syntax of an if. There's if, there's parentheses, there's uh, an expression that must be of type bool, like it needs to be a bool. And then there's an embedded statement, which this could be something like, you know, uh, uh, just a plain old statement, but it could also be a block statement. So that's why those things work. Um, anyway, I'm kind of rambling here, but the, the point is that um, like expressions are also building blocks and like so much of what you see is an expression um it, like you see them all over the place I, like a literal like this right here that is an expression that a literal is about the simplest form of an expression this one is an expression it, a reference to a variable like this thing here that is an expression on its own but so much stuff actually is a part of that so like this kind of thing this like comparison that's an expression and it is it doesn't require two specific values. It, it has two sub expressions and each of the sub expressions are evaluated and then they're compared. So it, like when it's evaluating, it has to figure out, well, what is, what's the value of this? Well, for a variable, it just sees what's inside of that variable. That's what it evaluates to. Anyway, the point is that lots of things that you might not expect, like when you, when you look at something like int x equals three int y equals two times x plus one like if you're used to math that's that's a mathematical expression um so this kind of thing isn't surprising to people but what is sometimes surprising to people is how many other things are also an expression and um what's interesting is for example an assignment is an expression. So I can do something like this and I can say X equals Y equals two times X plus one. How often do you do this? Not that often, but what this does is it evaluates this and then it assigns that into Y and then whatever this part evaluated to, like this right here is an expression. And when you evaluate it, it's whatever this ended up being, in this case, X is three. So this ends up being seven. So like, this whole thing, basically, as it's running, it'll simplify this down to, it'll set the value of seven in the variable y, and then it simplifies it down to this, and then it puts that same value of seven into x. So in this case, when we have x equals three, y equals two, x equals y equals two times x plus one, it evaluates this to get seven, and by the end of this statement, x and y both contain a value of seven. Um, What's also interesting is this, like we see this kind of thing all the time where we just have, you know, city plus plus, which in increments the value in city. But this will, this, this, like you, we often just see it written like this, where it's city plus plus, some variable plus plus, some variable minus minus, like that's the normal context we see it as. But this is also an expression. And so that means that I could do something like int x equals city plus plus. Um, and this expression evaluates to, so, so this, when we're, when this gets evaluated, there's a side effect of changing the value of city. It adds one to city. Um, so the variable city, if let's say I'm going to, simplify this here if city is let's say 10 um then what will happen so we run this line line 47 and it sets city to 10 that's a simple expression and a simple statement and assignment when we do this what this will do is it'll take the value in city add one to it store that value back into city so now at this point city will now be 11 but interestingly this is an expression and it will evaluate to the way I've written it here, city plus plus to whatever city was before. So 10. So by the time this runs, I now have a new variable called X who, that has been initialized to 10. Meanwhile, city has now been incremented to 11. Um, at any rate, <laughs> this code compiles 
Um, and the difference here, so I right now I've got plus plus round minus minus city. Um, the, like the difference between city plus plus and plus plus city, like as these are written here, there is no difference. In both cases, city moves from whatever it was, say 10 to 11. And actually, since I've got this in here twice, on this line it goes from 10 to 11, and on this line it goes from 11 to 12. Uh, yeah, so, but the difference between city plus plus, let's see, city plus plus and plus plus city uh, comes, is, is based on what does the expression evaluate to. If I say int x equals city plus plus, and I say int y equals plus plus city, let me simplify this a little bit, city equals 10, so we'll do these in parts, city equals 10. The difference here is that the way this works, where we do city plus plus, the value of this expression will be whatever city was in the first place, so 10. So x will end up, city gets incremented to 11, but x is the original value, 10, versus this right here, where um, the expression evaluates to the, the new, the incremented value. So in this case, both city and y will take on a value of 11. Now, I got 10 seconds left. You're going to hear the timer here in a second. Um, but I do want to finish my thought. That's the timer over. So I'm going to finish this thought and then I'll be done. There's more I could have done, but, um, 20 minutes is 20 minutes. So, um, what I will say here is like what this is doing is this says, okay, take whatever value city had. So this is like the health of the city. And we're supposed to, every round, we're supposed to deal one damage to the city. So this is subtracting. You know, if its health was 10 before, then it should drop down to 9 because this the manticore has damaged the city. So that's the intent here. Um, however, we're kind of doing it twice. So this uh, city, so what this does is says whatever the value was, let's suppose it was 10, it subtracts 1. It, it decrements that city variable. So now city goes from 10 down to 9. This expression will evaluate to, because this is a prefix notation, because the minus minus comes before the variable, this will evaluate to the new value, not the old value. So now we city, after running, after evaluating this much of the expression, city has been moved from 10 down to 9, and the expression now becomes effectively this. So we update city to 9 for the second time. All we really need is minus minus city, or um, like so either, rather than what we've got here, I would say either this, either you just do minus minus city, or instead you do city equals city minus 1, or you could do city minus equals one. Um, all three of those are exactly the same thing and don't make a second assignment. Because like I said, this as a side effect will change the variable city. And then there's a like a explicitly written out assignment to city right here. So I would pick either of these over this. You obviously don't need all three of them. I, when I'm only decrementing, if it's only one, like the advantage of some of these other ones is that like this works if I need to do minus 10, you know, minus equals five. Uh, this, the minus minus only works if it's exactly like one. But that's what we've got here. So I would just do city minus minus, And then I do down here, I do ground plus plus. But now at this point, given that this is already modifying city, whether I do minus minus city or city minus minus, Um, like those are the same in this context where we're not like using whatever it evaluates to. We're not like storing that the result of the expression anywhere else. It doesn't matter whether we do minus minus city or city minus minus. And I have a personal preference for putting it after. So I like this version better. I think that's simpler 
while still accomplishing everything. Again, I, I said 20 minutes and I'm going to stop myself here. So I, there's more that we could do. Um, overall, this code is actually, I like it. I, I don't really have any complaints. I've made some changes. Like I, I can imagine like this stuff right here screams method to me. Um, so I might, I might've considered that and, uh, you know, just, just a handful of other things that are worth considering a bunch of stuff that could be done different that don't necessarily improve it, but it might, I might want to tinker with that if I had another 20 minutes, but I don't. So I actually do like this usage of the, um, oh shoot, what's this feature called? This is a C-sharp 11 feature the um, like the multi-line raw string literal, I think is what it's called, because like this really does span multiple lines. I like the usage of string interpolation here. Anyway, I like this line a lot. Uh, anyway, there's more that could be done here, but even where this started, I liked it. I think it's good code. I made some changes to my personal liking, whether you like it or not is up to you. There is a fair bit of writing code that is subjective and not everybody agrees. So somebody else might do this and, and have some wildly different answers, and that's fine too, but this is where I got to. I'm going to call it a day here, so uh, hopefully people find this useful. The person who submitted the code and asked for people to refactor it, and also other people, because I'm just posting this on YouTube. But uh, yeah, that is it for right now. Uh, thanks for joining me, and uh, see you next time.